Hey everybody, The Digital here, and today we're diving headfirst into the exciting world of ethical hacking with a twist. We're talking about building a hacking lab so portable, you can literally carry the power to explore networks in your pocket. That's right, forget bulky desktops, we're going lean, mean, and mobile. This video is your one-stop shop for everything you need to know, from the hardware and software that'll become your digital lockpicks, to the step-by-step -step process of setting up your very own pocket-sized hacking lab. Whether you're a seasoned techie or just starting out, this video will equip you with the knowledge to navigate the fascinating world of ethical hacking on the go. We'll be covering everything from setting up a portable Linux environment to using your phone as a network analyzer, all while emphasizing the importance of responsible and ethical hacking practices. So buckle up, smash that like button for the algorithm, and let's get started. All right, let's talk about why you'd even want a pocket-sized hacking lab in the first place. Picture this. You're at a coffee shop, enjoying a latte, and you want to test the security of their Wi-Fi, with permission of course because we're all about ethical hacking here. Instead of lugging around a heavy laptop, you pull out your trusty, pocket-sized device loaded with all the tools you need. Bam! You're in. Okay, maybe it's not always that dramatic, but you get the idea. Portability means freedom. You can practice your skills anywhere, anytime, learn on the go, experiment in different environments, and impress your friends with your ability to, uh, ethically access their unsecured Wi-Fi. Just kidding. Sort of. But seriously, having a portable hacking lab opens up a world of possibilities for learning and exploration. Plus, it's just plain cool. It's like having a secret agent toolkit, but instead of exploding pens you have, well, Kaylee Linux, which, let's be honest, is way cooler. Let's gather our digital arsenal. You won't need a ton of expensive gear. It can be surprisingly simple. First, a Raspberry Pi. This credit card size computer is powerful and portable. It runs Linux and is perfect for our needs. You'll need a micro SD card for the OS and tools, a reliable power source like a portable power bank, and a Wi-Fi adapter for internet connectivity. With our hardware assembled, it's time to breathe life into our pocket-sized hacking lab. And what better way to do that than with Kaylee Linux, the go-to operating system for ethical hackers and security professionals. Now installing Kaylee Linux on a Raspberry Pi is surprisingly straightforward. You'll need to download the Kaylee Linux Raspberry Pi image from the official website and use a tool like Belina Etcher to flash it onto your micro SD card. Don't worry, it's easier than it sounds, and we'll walk you through the process step by step. Once you flash the image, simply insert the micro SD card into your Raspberry Pi, connect it to a monitor or TV using an HDMI cable, plug in your keyboard and mouse and power it up. Boom! You're greeted by the familiar Kali Linux desktop. Now, I know what you're thinking. Linus, this isn't exactly pocket-sized yet, and you're right. But don't worry, we'll get to that in a bit. For now, let's focus on getting Kali up and running on our Raspberry Pi. Chapter 4 Bridging the gap. Okay, so we've got Kaylee Linux up and running on our Raspberry Pi. But how do we actually use it without a monitor, keyboard, and mouse? That's where things get really interesting. We're going to use a technique called SSH, or Secure Shell. SSH allows us to remotely access our Raspberry Pi from another device like our laptop or even our smartphone. It's like having a digital umbilical cord connecting us to our portable hacking lab. To do this, we'll need to find our Raspberry Pi's IP address on our network. Once we have the IP address, we can use an SSH client like PuTTY or JuiceSH to connect to our Pi. And just like that, we're in. We can now control our Raspberry Pi as if we were sitting right in front of it. This is where the true portability of our hacking lab shines. We can literally carry it around in our pocket, connect to it wirelessly from anywhere, and unleash its full potential. Pretty neat, huh? Chapter 5. Step by Step. Let's dive into common ethical hacking tasks with your pocket-sized lab. First, network scanning. Using Nmap, map out devices, identify open ports and gather information. Next, vulnerability scanning with tools like OpenVAS and Nessus. Identify weaknesses to prevent exploitation. Use Metasploit for penetration testing. Report vulnerabilities responsibly. Finally, password cracking with Kali Linux tools. Chapter 6 ethical hacking on the go. Now, before we get too carried away with our newfound hacking prowess, let's take a moment to talk about ethics. Ethical hacking, also known as penetration testing, 
is all about finding vulnerabilities in systems and networks with the goal of making them more secure. It's like being a digital locksmith, testing locks to find weaknesses so they can be reinforced. The key difference is, ethical hackers have permission from the system owner to poke around and try to break things. Whenever you're conducting any kind of security testing, it's crucial to have explicit permission from the owner of the system or network. Unauthorized access is illegal, unethical, and could land you in hot water. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Use your knowledge for good, help make the digital world a safer place, and always, always hack ethically. Hold on to your hats, folks, because this next one's a game changer. Did you know you can actually turn your smartphone into a powerful network analyzer? That's right, your trusty pocket computer can become an extension of your portable hacking lab. There are some fantastic apps available, both on Android and iOS, that can transform your phone into a network analysis powerhouse. One such app is Fing, a network scanner that can identify devices connected to your network, display their IP addresses, MAC addresses, and even their manufacturers. Another handy app is Wireshark, a powerful network protocol analyzer that lets you capture and analyze network traffic in real time. It's like having a microscope for your network, allowing you to see the individual packets of data flowing back and forth. By using your phone as a network analyzer in conjunction with your Raspberry Pi hacking lab, you can gain a deeper understanding of network traffic, identify potential security issues, and even troubleshoot network problems. Now I know we've covered a lot of ground here, but the best way to learn ethical hacking is to actually get your hands dirty. Don't worry, I'm not suggesting you start hacking into your neighbor's Wi-Fi. Remember, ethical hacking is key. Instead, set up a safe and controlled environment where you can practice your skills without any real-world consequences. You can create your own virtual network using tools like VirtualBox or VMware, and then let loose with your portable hacking lab. Try out different tools, experiment with different techniques, and see what you can discover. The more you practice, the more comfortable you'll become with the tools and techniques of ethical hacking. And who knows, you might even surprise yourself with what you're capable of. Just remember to always hack ethically and responsibly. Now before we wrap things up, let's talk about some essential precautions to keep in mind when using your portable hacking lab. First and foremost, always use a VPN or virtual private network when connecting to public Wi-Fi networks. A VPN encrypts your internet traffic, making it much harder for hackers to intercept your data. Think of it like a secret tunnel for your data, shielding it from prying eyes. Secondly, make sure your Raspberry Pi is password protected. You don't want just anyone to be able to access your hacking lab and potentially cause havoc. Thirdly, keep your software up to date. Software updates often include security patches that fix known vulnerabilities. Neglecting updates is like leaving your front door unlocked, it's just asking for trouble. Finally, be mindful of your surroundings. If you're using your portable hacking lab in public, be aware of who's around you and what they might be able to see. You don't want to accidentally give away sensitive information or raise any unnecessary suspicion. And there you have it folks. You're well on your way to becoming a pocket-sized hacking pro. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. The world of ethical hacking is vast and constantly evolving, so never stop learning and exploring. There are tons of great resources available online, from websites and forums to online courses and certifications. One of my personal favorites is Hack the Box, an online platform where you can test your skills against real-world scenarios in a safe and legal environment. Another great resource is Cybrary, which offers a wealth of free cybersecurity training and resources. And of course, there's always good old-fashioned Google. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty, experiment, and most importantly, have fun. Ethical hacking is a challenging but incredibly rewarding field, and with your new portable lab, you're well-equipped to take on the digital world, one hack at a time. So there you have it, your very own pocket-sized hacking lab. Remember, the power to explore networks and uncover vulnerabilities comes with great responsibility. Always use your knowledge ethically and legally. The world of cybersecurity is vast and ever-changing, so never stop learning. Dive deeper into advanced techniques, explore new tools, and connect with other ethical hackers online. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And as always, 